Hi, my name is Johan, and I work on the YouTube APIs and Tools team. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the PHP Client Library and the YouTube Data API to upload a video. OK, so the first thing we're going to talk about is requirements that you'll need to run the demo application. You're going to want a test server running PHP 5.1.4 or higher. We actually prefer PHP 5.2. You also need the Google Data component of the Zen framework and the demo application, which is available in the Demos folder. You can find links for all the downloads on code.google.com slash APIs slash YouTube. So here's our YouTube demo application. I want to add a disclaimer that this is not to be used in production, but primarily exists to explain the YouTube API functionality. The demo application consists of a number of files. We're going to spend most of our time in the file called operations.php, which handles all of the YouTube API interactions. So if you look at operations.php, you'll notice that the first thing we need is to include the Zend Loader class. This allows us to load all of the required YouTube API classes. You'll also notice that the application is session-based. We'll go into more detail on that in a little bit. All of the YouTube API calls get handled by a YouTube service object. This object can be used in an authenticated way or in an unauthenticated way. Unauthenticated requests allow you to retrieve standard YouTube feeds and all public videos. Authenticated requests, by contrast, allow you to upload videos or access private videos. So we can use the demo application to handle some unauthenticated requests. What we can do here is we can search for videos. We can look at top rated videos or access videos from a specific user. So if I click Search, I can retrieve all the videos that are about GData. And I can click on a video's title to watch the video. What you'll notice is that we're also printing out all of the video's metadata, as well as related videos and top-rated videos by the user. The demo application also handles paging of re results and shows some back and next buttons where you can look through all of the videos that are returned by your search. In the code, you can see that unauthenticated requests require us to create a YouTube service object and a video query. We then set some parameters on the video query, such as the type of search we want to perform, and pass the query to the get video feed method of the YouTube service object. That returns us a feed of video entries, which we parse through in the echo video list function. As you can see here, in the echo video list function, we're retrieving each individual video entry and then accessing that video entry's metadata. We print all the metadata in a basic HTML table and return that to the browser. So now we're going to talk about authentication with the YouTube API. There are two ways for your application to authenticate to YouTube. We have a client login mechanism, which primarily exists for installed desktop applications, and an auth sub mechanism which exists for web-based applications. The client login mechanism requires your application to store the user credentials, which are then passed to the API using HTTPS. In auth sub authentication, there's no need for your application to store any credentials. Everything is handled with a number of tokens that get passed between your application and the YouTube API. The way auth sub authentication works is that your application creates a link where the user can authenticate with YouTube. The user then decides to allow your application access to their account and gets passed back to your application, which is then authenticated. So now we're going to authenticate our demo application with YouTube. The first step is that we need to set our developer key. Refer to code.google.com slash API slash YouTube on how to get your developer key. So now we see the link to authenticate with YouTube. We click on this link and we get directed to YouTube. I'm going to log in with my Google account. And now I get a screen where YouTube asks me whether the demo application can have access to my account. So I'm going to allow the access. And I get redirected back to the demo application, which is now authenticated. You can click on the link in the header to examine the actual session variables that were set in this process. What you'll notice is that the developer key is here. And at the bottom, you'll also notice that a session token has now been set. In the code, we're relying on three simple helper methods to perform auth sub authentication. 
The first method is called generate all sub request link and just calls a static function on the Zen GD to all sub class, passing in the URL of our application, scope, secure, and session parameters. That creates a simple link where the user can authenticate with YouTube. The next helper method is called update all sub token. This helper method gets called after the user has authenticated and again calls a static function on the Zen GData all sub class to update the single use token that the user received to a session token. The last helper function is called get all sub HTTP client. Again, we call a static function on the Zen GData all sub class, passing in our session token and receiving an HTTP client. We are also setting the developer key into the client's header in this function. So now that the demo application is authenticated, we're going to perform a video upload. There are two ways to upload videos to the YouTube API. There's a direct upload where your application sends the video metadata along with the file binary in one request. There's also a browser-based upload where your application sends the video metadata first, receives some variables, and then creates an HTML form that the user can use to upload the actual video file. So to perform browser-based uploads, we're going to click on the Upload a Video link and enter the video's metadata. So I'm going to enter a title, description, you can pick a category, and enter some video tags. This now gets sent to YouTube, and I receive an HTML form that I can use to upload the actual video file. Okay, so my entry was created, and I get back the video ID of the actual entry. So in the code, video uploads are handled by the create upload form function. First thing we do here is create an authenticated YouTube service object and a blank video entry. We then use helper functions on the video entry to set the video's metadata, such as title, description, category, and so on. We then pass the new video entry to the get form upload token method on the YouTube service object. That method returns us an array of variables, which we then use in the HTML form that we print to the browser. So now you know how to upload a video to YouTube using the API and the PHP client library. There are a lot of things that I didn't cover, so for more information, check out the PHP Developer's Guide and our documentation on code.google.com.